Welcome back everyone. In today's video, we're going to talk about a couple simple ways to create richer and more dramatic images. As an example, we'll take this beautiful but kind of plain looking image of a lion and change it to this rather dramatic version of the king of the jungle. Let me show you how I did it in Affinity Photo 2. I started with this great picture of Leo the lion I found on pixabay.com. The first thing I want to do is to enhance the darker shadow area on the lion with a bit of colour without impacting the mid-tones and highlights too much. So I'll go to Layers in the menu and select New Fill Layer. Then I'll use the colour wheel to change the colour to a deep shade of blue. Next, I'll select the Blend Modes drop-down and change the mode to Soft Lighting to blend the dark blue into the lion. Next, I'll click on the Layer Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel and then I'll click Command or Control i to invert the mask. You can see that the lion reverts back to its former tones. Next, I'll select my Paintbrush tool, make sure the colour is set to white, and I'll paint over the lion where I want to see the effect take place. Note that on an inverted mask, white adds the layer back onto the image. Also, you may want to use a pretty soft brush here. I have mine set to 47% opacity, 64% flow, and 46% hardness, so it adds the dark blue in a bit more gradually. All right, now, if I turn the blue adjustment layer on and off, you can see that the effect on the lion is already pretty dramatic, but it's mostly to the darker tones. Let's add a little color to the lighter tones next. To do this, we'll go back to Layers in the menu, select New Fill Layer, and then use the color wheel to change it to a yellow-orange color. Okay, that looks good. Now I'll go back to the Blend Modes drop down at the top of the Layers panel, and I'll change the mode to Color Dodge. This will blend the new color layer in, but will affect the highlights more than the rest of the image. I think that's a bit too bright, so I'll use the color wheel to tone it down a little. There, that's better. Now, I'll add a new layer mask by clicking the button at the bottom of the layer panel, and I'll click Command or Control i to invert the mask. You see the lion change back to its previous shading. Now, just like before, I'll paint over the lion with a white paintbrush. First, however, I'm going to lower my brush opacity down to about 37%. I don't want to blow out the highlights with the new color. I just want a subtle but noticeable change. As I paint over this, you can see the difference take hold. The lighter tones have taken on a much more vibrant golden look. Now, if I turn both of the adjustment layers off and then on again, you can really see the before and after effect. All right, I think the lion looks great, but the background is a bit distracting. Let me see if I can improve on that too. I'll start by right-clicking on the layers and then scrolling down to Merge Visible. This will combine all of the layers into a new single pixel layer which is on the top. Then, with the new layer selected, I'll click on the Selection Brush tool from the left-hand toolbar and then I'll paint over the Lord of the Jungle. I want to isolate my lion and remove him from the background so I can work with them independently. So, I'll paint over the entire lion trying to include the fine hairs around his head and chest. And then, I'll click the Refine button in the top toolbar. You can see the reddish overlay come up indicating the areas outside of my selection. I'll use the foreground and background adjustment brushes to try to get in the area around his front legs. And I'll use the matte adjustment brush to go around the fine hairs that weren't included. Then I'll select the output to a new layer with mask. It isn't perfect, but we can work on it a bit more using the mask in a minutes. Okay, now I'll turn the merged layer back on using the dot to the right side of the layer. And I'll select it. Then I'll click on the Adjustments button at the bottom of the Layers panel and I'll select Brightness and Contrast. To darken the background, 
I'll lower the brightness slider down quite a bit. That does a good job hiding the ugly fence. But the areas of the background that I missed in the refine mask clearly stick out. So I'll click on the mask on the line cutout, make sure my paintbrush is set to black, and I'll raise up the brush's opacity in the top toolbar. Painting black over a white mask will remove the top layer in those areas, so in this case, you can now see the darkened area below. I'm going to continue painting over the mask a bit more. I want it to look like the sun is hitting on my furry friend's side and face. So, I'll keep painting over the legs a bit. Then, I'll lower the opacity and go over the area around his tail, butt and back a little. Alright, one more thing and I'll let you go. I think the background is still a bit distracting, so I'm going to add a vignette type look but by using a fill layer just for fun. To do this, I'll go to Layers in the menu and select New Fill Layer and set the colour to black. Then, I'll click the Layer Mask button at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll select it and then I'll use the Gradient tool from the left-hand toolbar and drag a line from the centre of the image to the upper left corner. I'll change the type from Linear to Radial in the top toolbar and then I'll click on the Reverse Gradient button to flip the gradient from black to white. At this point, I can then move the gradient tool around to where I want it and I can adjust the strength using the slider in the middle. Well, I think that's a pretty dramatic improvement, so I better leave well enough alone. If you learned something and want to help support my little channel, please click those like and describe buttons. And if you're feeling generous, there's a link to buy me a coffee in the description. Have a great day, everybody.